So I'm like, oh man, the anticipation is ridiculous. So I get in the boilerplate uh, language. I'm glad to tell you that you have passed the Georgia bar exam. I do like the Tiger Woods. <laughs> I do like the Tiger Woods thing. And um, yeah, it was a great feeling. I know me and my dad, we literally stood in the living room and cried. Well, hey everybody, welcome to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And we've got a really great opportunity today to talk to a newly successful Georgia bar taker, Ashley Carnage. Hi, Ashley, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm great. I'm imagining that you feel pretty good right now getting these results in, yeah? Yeah, I feel pretty great. Uh, it's a great feeling. Yeah, well, I wanna be able to give you the chance to share your story with our audience today. Because Georgia's a really tough exam, isn't it? I mean, this was not a, not a gimme. Yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. It's a lot of writing on the first day. Yeah, there's a lot to do there. So let's, um, let's back up and talk a little bit about uh, where you went to school, what your plans were, what kind of got you in, uh, you know, down that road towards the bar exam. Okay, well, I attended law school at Florida Coastal School of Law. And I attended undergrad at FAMU. Initially, I was a biology major, and I changed my major to uh, political <laughs> science, okay. uh, pre-law. And since then, I ended up um, getting in uh, Hatchet Pre-Law Society at FAMU. And it pretty much got me in the direction, um, going to law school, getting in, and so forth. So I... Got to Florida Coastal. I was actually in the Ample program at Florida Coastal, so I had to go the alternate route to get you want in. To you want to explain that to our audience? Tell them a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So the Ample program is for people who didn't get into law school. Either their GPA wasn't adequate or their um, LSAT score wasn't adequate enough to get them into law school the regular way. So what they do is they give you two courses, uh, negotiable instruments, and Fourth Amendment, I believe, and um, you have to make, I want to say, a 3.0 3 or higher, and I ended up getting a 3.5 in the, between those two courses, so they let me in um, based okay. on that, and um, I've graduated from Florida Coastal in December of 2016, mm -hmm. and yeah, here we are. Okay, so after you got out of Florida Coastal, um, you sat for the Florida Bar Exam, right? I did. Okay, I said, let's, let's talk a little bit about that because that was that was a tough experience for you. Right, right. I took the Florida Bar Exam in February. I did not get favor favorable results from that. Um, I took Barbary. Um, there wasn't enough time, I felt, to get all the stuff done that they expected you to do um, as far as instruction. There wasn't a lot of instructions. It was more like sink or swim for me. Um, but yeah, I got my Florida bar results back in April, and I was devastated, of course, as most people are when they uh, take the bar exam. I scored, I believe, a 120... 121 on my MBE. Okay. And, and and just for our audience, you need a 136 basically. So a bit of a gap. Now, just to, again, to be clear, you didn't start your studying with them until after you graduated from law school, right? So you'd been through the, right. and, and Florida Coastal, if my memory serves, does a bar prep class. Were you part of that class as well in your third right. year? Yeah. They, um, they make us do two bar prep courses the last semester. So yes, I was okay. part of that. Yeah, so just just to put a not to put too fine a point on it, but they make you pay tuition dollars for bar review and then buy a bar review. So mm -hmm. okay, hmm. funny funny how that works. All right, so uh, so you worked at it and and you you did you graduated uh, pretty comfortably. I mean, you did well in law school after you got under, into school, right? I mean, you weren't a bottom of the class kind of person. No, I never failed the class in law no. school. I just I graduated early actually, so yeah. I yeah. was supposed to graduate in May. I graduated in December, so yeah. Okay, and and the reason I know this, uh, folks, is because Ashley came to me through uh, a mutual friend who uh, is a pretty good picker of talent, uh, Dan D'Alessio, right? 
And Dan said, there is a young woman over at Coastal who I think has got a lot of ability and she's getting really frustrated with the way things are going. Can you help her out? So that was the connection, right? He suggested that you talk to us. Um, so you finished the Florida bar, you get your results in April. They're not favorable. Feels pretty discouraging, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely discouraging. Yeah. So talk our audience through kind of your thought process at that point. Well, my thought process was immediately after I got my results, a um, couple of days later, I ended up calling you, mm -hmm. I believe. And yeah. then I signed up for your course and I'll just jump right back on the horse a couple of yeah. days later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't waste any time at all. And I thought that was really important because instead of kind of feeling sorry for yourself, which I, who would blame you if you did, uh, mm -hmm. you were just kind of like pretty stoic, really kind of like, okay, I'm going to do this, but here's the twist. You decided not to sit for Florida again, right? Right. So, so talk time, to us about that. Right. So this time I sat for Georgia, which is where I'm actually from. I'm from Thomasville, Georgia. I had initially okay. planned on taking both bar exams, Florida and Georgia. So I had already had my paperwork in for Georgia. And so essentially I did my character and fitness. I was waiting on that. And came come July, I was sitting for the exam. Georgia is a lot, their environment is a lot more comfortable than Florida. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because there's a, there's a lot of crossover between these two states. What, what right. did you see as the differences in the environment, in just the way the bar examiners act and behave and the, the sort of the process? Oh, wow. Um, Florida, you have <laughs> metal detectors, and I don't think there were any metal detectors in Georgia. Um, they weren't checking your IDs or anything. I mean, you had to put your ID on your desk and so forth. But it was just, Florida is a lot, it's a... What is more of a haze than Georgia is? I'd say that. To That's a great way to put it. It is a haze. It, it's a mind game that, that gets played. And of course, you know, the proctors coming and turning their heads, you know, putting their heads under your head and looking, you know, it's like, really? You right. can't look at my ID without looking up my nose? I mean, it seems right. an odd thing. Um, right. But in Georgia, that wasn't happening, right? No, no, it was, it was very comfortable. I came in, I sat down. I was a handwriter, so... I was, yeah. I came in last. Yeah. So the people who use their computers went in first and then we went in like 45 minutes later yeah. and it was just a comfortable environment. I actually felt very uh, relaxed going into it and. Good. All right. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you studied and prepared for it, but I want to, since you've mentioned handwriting, I want to talk about this because you're kind of the exception to the rule. I generally don't recommend that people handwrite. Uh, I like them to type, but you were pretty adamant about the fact that you were going to handwrite. So can you talk a little bit about why you wanted to do that and what that was like for you? Well, I handwrote because during law school, I handwrote all of my exams. So that was where I was most comfortable. I like the feeling of mm -hmm. actually writing and feeling what, I, what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. And my speed of typing um, might not be that fast. So I, I've I figured that I had a pretty great advantage if I wrote. Um, also, before I went into the exam, I looked up the um, the requirements for people who handwrite. Uh, don't write outside the margins. Right. Don't do this. I had to get special pens, ballpoint pens, to make sure mm -hmm. my writing was legible. Mm -hmm. So I prepared for it. Yeah, you can't skip lines. You can't write on the back of the paper. I mean, they're, they're, Georgia has really specific, they have word counts on the, the for the people that type, but for handwriters, they've got specific rules as well. So the moral of the story is if you're going to handwrite, go check out the rules, make sure you can do it. And mm -hmm. your handwriting was legible, right? I mean, you weren't just scribbling and you were organized and you knew what you were going to do. So it's possible, and I want to just be clear about this because sometimes people mistake my comments. It is possible to pass the exam with handwriting. You just have to approach it differently and it's a different strategy. But I love the thing that you said about feeling the connection uh, mm -hmm. between what your hand is doing and your head. There's a kinesthetic connection, isn't there? And it's right. like, okay, I'm doing it. And you know, truthfully, anybody my age 
uh, that's how we did everything. We hand wrote all of our tests. We hand wrote the bar exam. I mean, that, that was the norm until probably uh, five or six years ago. So it is certainly possible to do it. Uh, and you're, you're an example of that. So that, you know, that was awesome. Well, let's, let's back up a little bit now and just talk. You made the decision you were going to take the Georgia bar exam. Uh, and so we said, okay, let's, let's get started here. And you signed up for our basic coaching course. Um, and talk to me a little bit about what the study process was like and what you saw that was different uh, going through our course than what you had done previously. Okay, so going through this course, um, I like the fact that I only had to put three to four hours of studying in a day. I mean, I was at the library every single day, even on the weekends, but it was only for three to four hours. So it didn't feel like I was putting that much of a stress on my brain. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I was able to keep my stress levels down while studying for the exam. And I also like the fact that we didn't, it wasn't focused on memorizing the information. It was just focused on knowing like what you were talking about and what you were seeing and what you were learning. Like it was, it was repetitive and redundant mm -hmm. and you got it. Like right, after right. you were able to, I guess, spit it out as if like you, you know, had no, cause some of the stuff. As if was, you knew it. <laughs> yeah. That was on there. Like you didn't even see in law school. Right. Right. I mean, everything that's on the bar exam, you may not go over in law school. So it's kind of right. like, it was a great course. I would, I'm definitely going to take it again for Florida. Good, good. Well, I, I appreciate that. You know, our approach of spaced repetition that you're talking about versus memorization really does make a huge difference, doesn't it? Instead of creating flashcards and spending all those hours trying to memorize, now you're just seeing the material, repeating the material, getting ready, using practice questions and so on. Um were you working uh, while you studied this time or were you studying full time? I was studying full time. Um, okay. My dad is a big advocate of not working while you study for the bar exam. So he was just like focused on what you have to do. And this is your full time job and get this done. So that's awesome. Yeah. Good. Good dad. Thank you, dad. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I get that. Um all right, so you're studying, you're going through all this process. Um, you were uh, part of our uh, Facebook group, The Extra Mile, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you participate in any of the group coaching calls? I didn't. I didn't have the opportunity to participate yeah. in any of the group coaching calls, okay. but I did check the Facebook group periodically to see right. what everyone was talking about and um, see whether people had the same problems I had while studying or just to yeah. voice my concerns about, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and that was helpful. And I've noticed one, I've said this in other interviews, but you've come back to the group as a, a now a member of the bar and you're offering your support and suggestions to students. And it's so wonderful to see that. And I'm, I'm so appreciative, but I mean, we had a student that was really struggling with handwriting, whether they should or shouldn't. And you jumped in there and said, Hey, look, it can be done. It's, you know, you just, right. and I thought this is perfect. You know, it's so good to hear from somebody who's had that experience and can say, here's what should happen. So I think our, our Facebook group is this wonderful opportunity. It's a community of people. And uh, as we're get, you know, uh, students who pass are sticking around to help out, which uh, is just really, really awesome. Right. So, you're studying, you're working through all this, you're, you're, on a, you're following our syllabus. You said when you did the Florida exam, you felt kind of behind already because of the short time frame. Did you have that same sense in getting ready for Georgia? Um, no, actually, I felt like I was on track most of the time. Even if I got a little bit behind, it, it wasn't so overburdensome where I couldn't you know, catch back up because you only have to put in three to four hours a day. Right, right. So um, if I ever got behind on my multiple choice, then I would just try to double it up, but do part of it in the morning and part of it in the evening. And it wouldn't be much of a burden on me, but having to do eight to maybe 10 hours a day with a uh, Barbary, it was, you couldn't get behind. Like, I know you have to be disciplined, but even the best of us procrastinate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one. Yeah, it's definitely hard to do that. And one of the things that's interesting, having been through both Florida and Georgia now, is that you see how many subjects Georgia tests or can mm -hmm. test. That was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? Oh, yes. 
Um, what threw me for a loop was uh, the, well, actually, I expected all of that to be on there because of your, um, you don't say predictions anymore, but. <laughs> My preview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the uh, anti litum notice yeah. threw me. I didn't know. I was like, what's the anti litum notice? But yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Not something they've tested before, that's for sure. Uh, but but there were just a lot of subjects. I mean, Georgia has more subjects available to test, and then they kind of go off these weird ways. And, of course, it was a 45-minute essay instead of a 60-minute essay. So that was a bit of an adjustment, too, wasn't it? Going from the longer question to a, to a slightly shorter one. And you added the performance test. What did you think about the performance test component? I think I was prepared for the performance test component because of I guess your course, definitely your course, because we had done, I know I probably did maybe two to four prep mm -hmm. MPTs yeah. to prepare myself, but both of them were objective, I want to say, and both of them were to a legal audience. Mm -hmm. So I felt as though they were pretty fair and straightforward, but in order to do it and in order to manage your time, you have to practice. There's no way that you can go in there and yeah. dedicate an hour and 45 minutes to each. And, or what is it an hour and 45 Hour and a half. Hour and a half, yeah. 90 and a half minutes. Each. So it's 45 minutes to outline and then right. take the other 45 to do whatever. But yeah, it was that would be tough. no way you can go in there, not practice and try to balance your time. It's really a, it's a race for time. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And Georgia, I think, really pushes you with uh, the essays and the performance tests, two performance tests in that first day. So uh, a lot to uh, to be doing there. And I, I know that makes a difference too. Um, so you go in, it's a two-day exam, you take the test. Um, how, how are you feeling after you come out of the test? What's your, what's your mindset as you finish up now? The first day or the second day? Oh, you can talk about either one. Okay. <laughs> um, well, after the first day, I really had to get my mind back in uh, war mode because mm -hmm. after the first day, you kind of get relaxed, like, oh, the hard part is over. Yeah. But as I was sitting in my hotel room, just I was just like, no. You have to get back up and you have to do more tomorrow. So you just have to keep your mind in the mindset that I'm not finished after day one, that there's more that I have to do. So immediately after I got back home and ate, I started back doing multiple choice questions again. Mm -hmm. um, I also did the 10 multiple choice questions you told us to do in the morning to get our mind prepared. And after day two of the MBE, which I didn't, I didn't find many challenges with the MBE. I think you prepared us pretty well for that. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I just felt free, like freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and now and now you have months to wait for results, right? Because <laughs> George right. is very slow in getting results out. So what's that period of time like when you're waiting for results and you see them coming in from all these other states? <laughs> it's <laughs> immediately when I saw people get their Florida bar mm -hmm. Um, results in. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish that was me. Yeah. It's just like, I wish that was me. I wish that was me. It's a long wait, but it's worth the wait. Um, well, yeah. So, so tell us about the day results come out and, you know, the way Georgia does this is that they just sort of poof, here we are and, you know, let's yeah. go. So Georgia doesn't release, they didn't release theirs in the morning this no. time. No. Um, so I actually made a trip to Hobby Lobby that day to get um, some paint stuff for my church. So as I'm in Hobby Lobby, I get a notification and I see this from the Georgia bar. So I'm in Valdosta, but I'm from Thomasville. So I'm like, I'm not opening it until I get home. So I didn't open it until I got home, which is a 45 minute drive. So the whole time I'm riding back to Thomasville, I'm thinking, I wonder what these results are like. I wonder what they say. So I um, got home. It's me and my dad sitting in the living room, and um, I opened my results. Now, mind you, the website is loaded with people, so you can't get in immediately. So I'm like, oh, man, the anticipation 
is ridiculous. So I get in and I see the um, the boilerplate uh, language. I'm glad to tell you, blah, 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 that you have passed the Georgia bar exam. You have cheetah passing school on the Georgia bar exam. So I do like the Tiger Woods. <laughs> I do like the Tiger Woods thing. And um, yeah, it was a great feeling. I know me and my dad, we literally stood in the living room and cried. My mom was at work, but me and my dad stood in the living room and cried. So it was a great moment for me. It is a great moment for you. You know, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you having the just the, the internal strength and the faith uh, to keep pushing forward and to do this work. Um, it's a big deal to pass. And, you know, uh, for a woman of color to pass the Georgia Bar is a big deal, folks. I, I just got to tell you, um, what, what do you want to do now? I mean, what, what's your plan now that you're a member of the Bar? Well, I definitely want to start out with doing criminal law to get the trial experience. And I essentially want to do personal injury, medical malpractice, um, products liability work as soon as I get my trial experience. So I want my heart is in personal injury and mm -hmm. tort. So um, but I like criminal law as well. So I feel as though that's going to give me the trial experience to go the route that I want to go. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and it is. It's a great way to get the trial experience and to, to be part of it. So you're going to stay in Thomasville. Is that your plan? Or are you going to go into a, to Atlanta? Or? Um, I'm a country girl, so I prefer <laughs> Thomasville, small okay. town. Yes, sir. That's awesome. That is so great. Well, so uh, your, your dad got to be there with you and you opened the results and you had that moment. What did your mom think and what did she say when she found out? She was ecstatic. She was very happy about it. Um, she was telling me that she was proud of me and that all my hard work had paid off. And that's always good when your parents are proud of you and what you're doing. Um, that's one of the things that you strive to do is to make your parents proud. So I was happy about that. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you too. Uh, and, and I know our entire team was just really excited. I mean, we did a, we did a couple of Tiger Woods fist pumps when we heard, you, so, <laughs> um, you know, it's just an awesome thing to, to accomplish. You know, there, there are undoubtedly some people in our audience today, um, Ashley, who are, are thinking to themselves, gosh, I just don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can get up and take this exam and be successful. What would you advise them? What would you say to them? I would say to them, just keep going. If you if you fall, just get back up. Um, fall seven times, stand up eight. Um, that if you believe in whatever you believe in, the God, like you say, the God of your understanding, mm -hmm. that he doesn't give us the spirit of fear. Right. Uh, so just know that you can do it if you put your mind to it and continue to keep, keep believing that yeah. you are and that you're capable. Yeah. I thought you had a, a, a spirit of courage all the way through this process. You were very, uh, very little drama. You just kept going. You, you, you did exactly what you just said. You just kept going. You kept working. You kept improving. You kept striving to be the best that you could be at this. And what a great feeling it is to be rewarded for all that work and effort and, and sort of like, ah. And, you know, sometimes people, I, I ask sometimes, does it feel kind of like you got your life back when, it's, when this is all yeah. over? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it did. Isn't that an amazing, amazing opportunity and experience? Well, I'm, I'm so thrilled for you and excited for you and, and just anxious to see where you go with your legal career and, uh, you know, whether it takes you back to Florida at some point or you stay in Georgia. It's nice to have that, that membership under your belt, isn't it? I mean, if you go back to Florida now, it's kind of knowing, hey, I'm already a member of the bar, right? Does that, that's a different calculation, isn't it? Right. And also, I want to actually motion into D.C., so I Great. scored 150 on the MBE, so I scored high enough to motion into D.C., so. All right, so let's just, let's just put this in perspective, folks. You took the Florida Bar, you got a 121 or so on the MBE. Uh, you uh, had gone all the way through law school. Now, a few months later, you sit for the exam again in Georgia. You get a 150. So we're talking about almost a 30-point increase in a relatively short period of time. I know people are going to say, how did you do that? How did you do that? With the Celebration Bar Review, uh, with their help and 
just taking the practice test and doing the multiple choice and trial and error, getting things wrong and just like, oh man, I have to keep going because I don't know how I got that wrong, but I'm going to go look up how I got that wrong and I'm going to see what, why my answer was wrong and see what the right answer is and just keep doing the multiple choice over and over and over and over again. I've never done so many multiple choice questions in my life, <laughs> but it paid off. Yeah, it sure did. That's just awesome. I mean, that 150 score, yeah, you can wave into some other jurisdictions. I mean, you'll pass any jurisdiction in the country with a 150 multi-state. I mean, you know, not saying you should go take California, but you could. <laughs> so there's a lot, there's a lot there and a lot for you to be proud of. Well, I, I am so appreciative that you would share your story and I know it's going to inspire other people. I know that it's going to be meaningful to lots of people that are listening and watching and uh, now are probably like me, fans of yours. Uh, so uh, we just wish you all the best success. And I'm personally looking forward to getting a chance to work with you again on the Florida bar or any other bar that you choose to take. But I can see you racking up some bar uh, admissions uh, around the country pretty easily. Uh, so that you've got more options and more opportunities for you. Um, and I think the more that you could get those options, uh, the more of an impact you can make, right, in the, the world, the more you can do, uh, whether it's in criminal law or personal injury or tort law or whatever might come along. And, you know, that's part of the reason that we love doing what we do is to see uh, the bar start to represent the communities and the people who live here and not, you know, we don't need, I've said this before, we don't need a lot more people that look like me in the bar, <laughs> you know, uh, but I think we need a lot more Ashley Carnages in the bar. And okay. so I am just incredibly pleased for you and uh, so grateful that you would come and, and share this. A anything else you want to uh, share with our audience today that any last sort of words of advice or wisdom for them? Um, just, just know how to take a lick and keep on going. Yeah. Love that. Take a licking and keep going. All right. Awesome. This folks, she hardly looks like somebody that's been beat up in the, in the, uh, in the battles. I want to tell you looking pretty, pretty smooth, pretty, pretty ready to go here. So, uh, we're just really thrilled. So thanks Ashley for being with us today. It's great to see you and to all of you in our audience. Thanks for joining us again. We'll be back soon. We'll uh, share another story with you and uh, we'll say goodbye for now. Bye-bye everybody. <laughs>